This is a flying taxi. There are videos of them all over the internet. They're sleek, futuristic, and promise to cut your commute in half. But most people actually have a hard time envisioning themselves stepping on board. Climbing aboard an aircraft that doesn't have a pilot inside is very new. That would look ugly if two of those collide in, in the sky. But safety isn't the only concern. Many are wondering who these flying taxis will actually benefit and what communities they might harm. What I don't want to see is what's happening around airports today, where you have communities that don't have access to the aviation system, but they're bearing the impacts associated with aviation. One way or another, the arrival of flying taxis seems to be a matter of when, and not if. And if companies like Whisk Aero can figure out how to implement them in a way that's not just safe, but truly accessible, all of our commutes might look a little different in just a few years. The technology is proven. We have an awesome fleet that flight tests round the clock. I'm hoping that I don't have to teach my daughters to drive. This will be something that is in place and in use when that time comes. We're trying to spread the joy of flight to everyone. This is Just Might Work, a show about surprising solutions to our biggest problems. Urban transit, especially in American cities, could use a facelift, or maybe an actual liftoff. That's where EV tolls come in. EV toll is an acronym, E-V-T-O-L, which stands for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft. EV tolls promise to be sustainable, scalable, and as affordable as a rideshare. And it's projected to become a multi-trillion dollar industry. When introducing a new transportation technology, we have a whole history of, of mistakes to learn from. Clint Harper is an aviation expert with Urban Movement Labs, a nonprofit collaboration of government, businesses, and the community that works to deploy new transportation tech into cities. They are popping up in cities from coast to coast, and renters, they can use an app. Urban Movement Labs was initially created in response to electric scooters that appeared on city streets you know, seemingly overnight without much time for cities to plan and understand the technology and how it might be integrated into the overall transportation system. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen again with any future technology and correct some of the wrongs that have been done in the past. The United States is primarily built around the personal automobile to accommodate those freeway systems. Many underrepresented, disadvantaged, and communities of color were plowed through and dismantled and disrupted. Similar to aviation, those users of those freeways, typically the benefits that's created through that aren't enjoyed by the communities that were disrupted or that were destroyed. As this new technology emerges and we have an opportunity to reimagine new infrastructure that might be required, how can we ensure that we don't make those similar mistakes? If you look at the companies that are out there now, that's been a part of their vision. And I think it's part of their, their business model to do that. We're working with regulators and partners to make sure that this service is woven into communities and environments correctly. What we're hoping is that by using WIS, you actually reduce the load on the rest of the transportation ecosystem. Yuri Tsarnatsky is the designer of Whisk Arrow's EV Toll, an ambitious project backed by Boeing. Whisk is one of the few EV Toll companies that plans to ferry passengers without a human pilot on board. This is a short flight demonstration taking off from Long Beach Airport and landing at LAX, which is an insane drive in rush hour traffic. This is just eight or 10 minutes. EV tolls like Whisk's won't be taking off from just anywhere. They will follow predetermined flight paths that take off and land on so-called vertiports, which are currently undergoing testing in cities around the world. And while these aircraft might seem like a new iteration on helicopters, they are a category in their own right. Helicopters got that single rotor, we've got 12. Any two could fail and we could still complete our mission safely. Fewer moving parts, no hydraulic fluid clean, all electric, whereas it could be hundreds of dollars to fly on a helicopter today, uh, it would be a fraction of that on our aircraft. WISC runs flight tests on its prototype nearly every day of the week. So Tsarnatsky's focus these days 
is largely on making the vehicle seem, well, welcoming. I like how intentional you're being here with like the shape and the use of material. I wonder if there's an opportunity to like use a pop of color to indicate things that someone would really intentionally need to right. use. We're making sure that we design something that's accessible. We've invited people into the studio. We've had people that use assistive mobility devices, walkers and canes and wheelchairs. The interface in the cabin is accessible. We don't want to have anyone have to fiddle with anything to make it work for them. It should feel like home. Our primary use case is the commuter, someone taking this to and from work. People will be arriving at a vertiport by bus or car or bike. And this will just be one segment along their route. If we've done our job well, this will seamlessly integrate into rideshare apps, and it will just be like another piece of that multimodal journey. While many eVTOL companies hope to become cost-effective, Whisk is making a big bet on automation. With the support of automated systems, operators will control multiple flights from the ground, rather than in the air. As we increase the number of airplanes, we need to ensure that the, the workload of the operator is not too high and that the user interface helps the operator in the task that it has to do. Using eye tracker, we want to make sure that the operators can gather the information they need. And with the physiology, we can see if the heart rate increases above a certain threshold and understand that the workload was too high. With more than $6 billion being poured into a handful of upstart companies like Whisk, this technology is on its way. There are expectations that people will be traversing Los Angeles during the 2028 Olympics via EV tolls. The question now is whether it will actually improve our cities. In communities where urban sprawl has already occurred, EV tolls offer a solution to bring people on the outskirts of those mega cities into the city center in a quiet, eco-friendly way. Package delivery, medical supply, disaster response use cases are things that are emerging as well. Looking into the future, I think we should be driving forward multimodal integration. Hubs that traditionally serve bus, trains, if we can incorporate an aviation component to that, then now we're starting to lift up the transportation system as a whole. If I need to get you know, 30 miles away and it's gonna take 50 minutes, but I have an aviation option that might get me there in 15 minutes, that's the future that I think I would like to see.